What was your bikini talk about? <laughs> so the viral bikini video. So it was called The Evolution of the Swimsuit. And I basically talked about the um, origin of the bikini. And it was um, designed by a man named Louis Rayard, French man. And it was so explosive because no one had ever worn something like that before that he named it after an atomic bomb site, Bikini Atoll. I don't know if I'm saying that correct. Um, but he couldn't find any models who would wear it. So he had to hire a stripper um, or an exotic dancer maybe to to model it. What year was for this? him? It was, I want to say it was in the 50s. Uh, it's been a while since I gave the talk, but uh, but I never I didn't even know they were recording. I didn't know they were recording it. I didn't know that it was out there. It was one of my friends who said, "Did you know your talk is on?" This is YouTube? the Q conference that you spoke at. Yes. It's not called Think, right? They rebranded. They they rebranded yeah. to Think. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's... I've actually never watched it myself. Oh, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> this is fun. Okay. I can't stand to listen to myself. <laughs> you sound great. Okay. <laughs> A few years ago, male college students at Princeton Univer University participated in studies of how the male brain reacts to seeing people in different amounts of clothing. Brain scans revealed that when men are shown pictures of scantily clad women, the region of the brain associated with tools such as screwdrivers and hammers lit up. Some men showed zero laughing. brain activity in the medial prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that lights up when one ponders another person's thoughts, feelings, and intentions. Researchers found this shocking because they almost never see this part of the brain shut down in this way. And a Princeton professor said, it's as if they're reacting to these women as if they are not fully human. It's consistent with the idea that they are responding to these photographs as if they were responding to objects, not people. In a separate Princeton study, when men viewed images of women in bikinis, they often associated with first-person action verbs, such as I push, I grab, I handle. But when they saw images of women dressed modestly, they associated them with third-person action verbs, such as she pushes, she grabs. Analysts at the National Geographic concluded that bikinis really do inspire men to see women as objects, as something to be used rather than someone to connect with. So, it seems that wearing a bikini does give a woman power, the power to shut down a man's ability to see her as a person, but rather as an object. Okay, that was very powerful. You have the data that you're sharing. Did anybody that was upset with you after this video respond to that particular point you were making about what the studies show? A lot of them said that, oh, in the studies, it was a bunch of rapists or <laughs> pedophiles or, you know, and I, I was like... I, I, Meaning I just, they somehow only surveyed rapists exclusively, yeah, not just they, men at they large. They were already ag sexually aggressive men is what they had told me, um, but... I'm, and I'm telling you, I've never listened to this before. I'm like sweating over here <laughs> watching myself because I hate listening oh. to myself talk. But um, I didn't know that you could hear the men in the audience laughing. I just realized that as we're watching it. And this was a Christian conference. Mm -hmm. And most of the people, I would say 90% men who were um, entrepreneurs and or pastors or Christian speakers and they laughed when I said the research because, and I had some people tell me afterwards, you didn't need to cite research for that. Like, mm. you know, they laughed because it was like a guilty laugh. Mm. Like they know that that's the way that, you know, they're not rapists or sexually aggressive, you know, they're just saying, yeah, you know, that's kind of what comes across our mind when, when we see that. So Anyway, I think that's really interesting, and I'd rather listen to them laughing than myself speaking. So <laughs> you, you're doing That's great. Not <laughs> I think um, I think that there's a lot of shame around this topic, and people get very quickly defensive, and sometimes understandably so, mm. because I do think there's a lot of extremes in our culture today. But I think the ground of st the stake, the ground that you're staking, which is that the bikini was extreme 50, right. 60, 70 years ago. Yeah. 
now it's so ubiquitous, so we think it's totally normal. But according to this data that you're sharing, it it does draw attention to particular parts of the bodies that, that are used for sex, typically. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, obviously breasts are also used for breastfeeding and everything right. else. You don't have to sexualize breasts always, but those are what are going the private parts for a reason. Right. So I think that, uh, you know, again, we haven't talked about this yet on, on the show here, but growing up, the bikini was always something when I was a kid, I would talk about with my mom. My mom was not like a super, you have to wear only skirts and long sleeve shirts, but there was this kind of common discussion we would have, this knowledge and in, in even friends, conversations with friends that the bikini was like pushing it. Mm. If you're a teenage girl wearing a bikini, that's kind of pushing it on the modest standard. But I think today a lot of people just think, oh, if you're against a bikini, you are crazy. Oh yeah. It's just a normal, it's just a normal thing now, now to wear. Um, and even, you know, the one piece swimsuits that exist are like with all the cutouts and they're super low cut or very high cut. I don't know. I don't understand some of them. I'm like, why is it smaller in the front? <laughs> one just, strip, tiny strip. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> and and I think it's important is this is not to shame anyone who has worn or no. does wear bikinis. And I don't think your posture was a shaming one. You're sharing research, you're sharing the history. And that enough got people, some people to be upset because I think we would prefer that we lived in a world where you can do whatever you want and there's never any exactly. negative consequences. Exactly. And I, I can understand why people want to live in that world because it eliminates sort of us having to deal with these thornier questions or these gray right. areas that may require us to even make compromises that we otherwise would not want to make, such as, okay, I'm not going to wear a bikini, right. even though I prefer it. Right. And I mean, modesty isn't just about you know not wearing a bikini or like I said, the inches and all these things, but it's a, it's an interior disposition and it is externally shown in the way you dress, but also the way you speak and the way you carry yourself, the way you treat other people. So I think when people get so oh, like defensive about that word modesty, they're immediately thinking, oh, like she's telling me I can't wear pants or I can't do this or I can't do that. And instead of thinking like, what can I not do? I think people really need to think about, you know, I am a temple of the Holy Spirit. I was made in the image and likeness of God. Does, do these words honor God? Do, does this dress, this swimsuit, does it, does it honor God? What I'm wearing, what I'm saying, how I'm acting. Um, and I think that's, that should be the way to.